just didn't leave me any room for my notes. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, being here this afternoon. Um, certainly wish none of us were here for uh, this purpose or any reason, but we are, and so um, uh, we proceed. You know, my job, um, more often than not, is a, is a really fun and exciting job. Um, most days are, are days that a lot of people would love to have. But unfortunately, it also comes with days that I certainly would not like to have, and I know that most people would certainly not want to have either. Um, it involves tough decisions. And being the athletics director, in a lot of ways, is not that unlike being the head coach. Head coach has got to decide who the coordinator is, got to decide who starts at quarterback, has got to decide who's on scholarship, who's not, who travels, who doesn't, who plays, who doesn't. And all those decisions disappoint somebody on the other side. This is a decision that I certainly wish didn't have to make. I wish we wouldn't have been in this spot because I know it disappoints a lot of people, especially Coach Rhodes, his staff, and our players. Coach Rhodes, his staff, and our players handled this extremely well. I wouldn't have thought or expected anything different from Paul and his staff. They're classy people. They're friends. Paul's my neighbor. Um, and I hope to have a great relationship with him for a long time. Sometimes you can want something more than it wants you. I wanted him to be our coach. He wanted to be our coach. But it just wasn't meant to be. A couple clarifications. Paul was not let go because of what happened on Saturday. We have a saying in the locker room, no one player, no one play costs a team a game. No one game costs a coach their job. We made the decision to make the change because we simply didn't win enough games and we weren't trending in the right direction. Why this week? There's never a good time to do it. But we felt, number one, it was the best time for the players. They're off school this week. Gives them a chance to be able to deal with the challenges that come with the coaching change while they're still together, while they still have a chance to have their brotherhood and deal with it as a group rather than next week when they're not coming to practice, when they're trying to go to school. And so we felt it was just better to deal with it this week and give them the opportunity to deal with it as a team, as a unit, while they weren't in school. We thought it was a better time for the coaching staff. You know, the assistant coaches would have all been taken off on Saturday night, Sunday, to go out recruiting next week. Would have had to call them all back in. It just was better to give them the ability to know their fate and time to be able to process that while we were still here. Thought it was a better time for our program. It gives us a chance to get a leg up on what is a very convoluted uh, marketplace right now. And lastly, and most importantly, I thought it was the best time for Coach Rhodes and his family. It gives them a chance to still be with their team, to have an opportunity to still coach these kids for one more week, give them a chance to be able to enjoy one more week of what's been a very enjoyable seven years. As Bill Fenley once said, don't be sad that it ended, but be happy that it happened. When Paul and I met yesterday, that's what we talked about. He got seven years to do something that most people give their right arm to do one time. We focus on the end, but there's been some great moments during that seven years, and hopefully over time he can take a lot of comfort in that. Why now when it appears our team is young and made some progress and ready to go? You know, I believe our team has got more talent in that locker room than we've had in my 10 years that I've been here. We have unbelievable potential. But unfortunately, they don't keep score on the scoreboard for potential and talent. They keep score on results. And we just didn't get the results that we need to get. 
Sometimes new leadership sparks tremendous success. When I look back in the history of Iowa State football, what Coach McCarney did to take this program from ashes to where it was when he was able to hand it off to the next. And where Coach Rhodes has taken this program and put people in the stands and put wonderful facilities for our football players and staff to use. Now it's time to hand it off to somebody else to see if they can take it to the next level. The search has begun and as we've done in the past, we're not gonna comment about what's going on in the search process until it's complete. With that, I'll open it up to questions. As we said at the beginning of the year, we would judge it at the, as the season unwound. I'll never put a number of wins on somebody because there's so many things that can happen, so many things out of someone's control. And um, you know, at the beginning of the year, I believe I said, maybe not directly quote what I said, because I may get the words exactly right, but um, I hope the season would be a really exciting season for everybody involved, fans, players, coaches. And um, in the end, I think we had more disappointments than we all would have liked to have had. Jay, you talked a little bit about how it's going to be a pretty wide open field with a lot of other schools looking for coaches too. What's your pitch? What are you trying to sell to people right now to stand out? We have a lot to sell. We have the greatest fans, I think, in the country. Our fans, um, and I know a lot of schools say that, but I think our fans prove it. Um, our fans have done far greater for us than we've given to our fans. And this, you know, to set a, a attendance record this season, coming off of five wins in the last two years, to have 52,500 plus for the last five straight seasons um, is absolutely phenomenal. So the fan support is second to none. We have the facilities. We don't have to go out and tell a coach, well, if you come here, we'll do this or we'll do that. We've done it. And uh, everything's in place. And thirdly, I think we have a locker room full of potential that we are poised and ready to uh, perform at the next level. We've just got to find that leader that can take us over the hump and get us to that next level of football. Well, you know, the salary structure is fluid because you, you, you deal with what the marketplace deals you. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we're certainly going to be competitive for what we need to get done. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, as far as timing, you know, it's, uh, I'll take my chances because I think we've, uh, we've proven that we're pretty effective about how we do a search process. And um, we'll see how it turns out. Place when, like a day in mind, you want to get this settled by? No, you never do that because there, there's so many ebbs and flows. And um, the most important thing is that you can find the right person, and then hopefully close the deal on the right person. But that, um, you know, the, there's an art to it, and um, there's no one cookie cutter way to do it. What did Paul show you when you hired him? Whenever it was that, what what made you hire? What we all saw and loved in Paul, his passion for this place. Um, he, uh, I still, you know, I, I, I said it to the team yesterday. Um, I said it to Paul when we met. I remember sitting here seven years ago when Coach Chiswick left, and it was a very emotional time for all of us and the players. And I remember meeting Paul and him saying, I watched that video, and I want to work for you. And he said it in that voice that we all know. And, you know, it was like you had me at hello. But, um, and, you know, that's what makes it hard because Paul Rhodes has, um, we chose right. You know, and I said it when we made the change with Dan McCarney. What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for somebody like the man sitting next to me, Dan McCarney. I think we chose right. Unfortunately, choosing right doesn't always mean they're going to, you know, have the best outcome. Um, you know, I've said many a time that you want to be in the bunker with somebody you want to be in the bunker with, and we were in the bunker with the right person with Paul Rhodes. It just, you know, in the end, it's, it's time for new leadership. When you have to replace that type of passion, do you have to find somebody with ties to the school almost? No, I think people overstate uh, that. You know, last time, uh, and I've, I've said this before, when we hired Coach Rhodes, we didn't hire Paul because he was from Ankeny, Iowa, um, that he was a local kid. We hired Coach Rhodes because he did 
what somebody would do to get this level of a job. You know, he left this program, if you all recall, for those that were here, the year before we were really good. And he's talked about that. It was a hard decision to leave because he knew we were going to be good in 2000. But it was his chance to go be a coordinator at a big-time school. And he did that, which put him in a position to go get a job and to get a head job at this level. The fact that he got to do it at Iowa State was great for him and great for us, but he didn't get the job because of that. He got the job because he was a very talented football coach that was ready to be a head coach. Jamie, you're very high on the line with this football. Could be next year if you're down the road and everything with that. This is a job that oftentimes ends up on one of those lists of the five or ten toughest jobs in the FBS. Do you think that's actually the case? Do you think that might impact the searching process? <clears throat> it's a hard job, you know, but they're all hard. Okay, you know, if you're at Alabama, it's hard because you don't get, you're not supposed to lose, you know, so that's hard too. Um, you know, but it's hard being athletics director. It's hard being the basketball coach. It's hard being the director of marketing. You know, it's just, um, but we need people that understand that and, and, and are excited by that. We're not looking for somebody that's going to ride into town thinking that they know more than everybody else. They got to come in and understand the environment and they got to be up for the fight because, um, you know, the, the rest of the Big 12 is not going to sit back and say, well, okay, let the new guy win. Um, they're going to have to fight their way through a very tough league. And so they got to be up for the challenge. And, and that's part of what makes the search process and art is, you know, that's, not the easiest thing to figure out in the process, okay? And that's why most coaching searches, you know, if you were to go back and look, you know, most, why is there so much turnover in our business? Because we're all trying to do the same thing, win, and half of us have to lose. Jamie, what did you see when you go through that process, trying to find that guy that fits everything you just said about embracing the challenge? I think you got to stay true to your values and, and find somebody that understands and fits with the Iowa State culture. And... Um, that I think we've done a really good job when I look at all our coaches and our staff throughout our department. Um, finding people that understand and fit the culture here is extremely important because um, this isn't a one person job. This is a job that, you know, the, the football coach needs the support of everybody in our department in order to help get there. We can't, we can't miss on any cylinders. And so if you have a coach that, you know, doesn't treat people with respect and, and, um, understands that they need all those people to support them, they probably are not going to be successful at Iowa State. Jamie, you said that, uh, that this wasn't about the Kansas State loss. It was a, a cumul an accumulation of things. But if Iowa State beats Kansas State, are we sitting here today? It's a hypothetical question. I wish I, could I, wish I had the opportunity to answer that question in real time. You know, but um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. and the momentum that Paul had in his first three, four years weren't able to be sustained and built upon these last few years? You know, that's a great question. If I knew that and if Paul knew that, we probably wouldn't be here because he would have figured it out in the moment. Um, you know, in hindsight, you can look back at your decisions and always start to question why things went the way they did. Um, clearly, um, you know, personnel is a big part of being a head coach. And, you know, it's a, uh, you know, Paul, it was his first time being head coach. And, you know, there were some changes that he made throughout the course of time with personnel. And, um, you know, I think every time you have turnover, that's usually not good to the long-term success. And, um, but why specifically, you know, I, I don't know. Offense, maybe that you're looking for to run with the next coach. Now I want to go back to just saying we got, we got to find somebody that gets our culture. Um, I'm not uh, you know going to get into that particular part of it. We're looking for a coach that we feel fits this culture and understands it and um, has a plan for how they're going to attack one of the best leagues in the country. What about when I think it was on Friday Houston came out and their board of regents approved like three million dollars. When you have schools like Houston and Memphis paying somebody like 2.2 million, how does that impact what you're about to do? And is Iowa State prepared to, you know, not a specific number. I know you said you would comment on that, but is Iowa State prepared to open up the checkbook? I worry about what we need to do, not what others need to do. Um, you know, we've 
if we get the right person, all that stuff takes care of itself. What's a realistic expectation for Iowa State football? Well, right now, I'd say we want to get back to having you know, to, to win it and going to bowl game. You know, um, you know that's uh, what we all strive to do is be postseason and have an extra month of the season. But I think it's um, you know it's it's about that, but it's about more than that. You know, it, it's about um, being part of this the, the culture of Iowa State. I mean, our fans are wonderful, and you know, football games are exciting and great things to do, and you want that experience to be enjoyable. But we need the coach to be somebody that resonates with our community around the state that helps us help him. Um, you know, and, and winning is a big part of that, but our fans have also shown that um, they're very patient. And, um, you know, they, they want somebody that's going to win, but we don't want to win at the expense of doing it the right way. Culture that you've talked about a couple times here today. You know, describe or define it. I think our our culture is very wholesome. I think it's very Midwest. Um, I think it's very sincere and grounded. Um, people want to know who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you've got to be approachable. You've got to be in the community. Um, you know, but but uh, wholesome is probably the best word that I can think of. The improvements athletic facility-wise that have already been made and the, the head coaching salary, what can the athletic department and the university do um, to help the new coach along as far as, as far as putting a winning program together, the kind of program that you're looking for? We, we need to continue to be um, extremely supportive and flexible. I think one of the great things that we have at Iowa State is we've got a president that understands the importance of athletics um, and a president that knows that, you know, our jobs over here are tough enough, so we don't need a ton of bureaucracy to navigate, you know, the world in which we operate in. And, um, and he's been wonderful on that front. We need, as, an, as a department and a fan base, to continue to know that when there's needs, we got to support them. And, you know, and we've shown that with the football building and the stadium improvements and being able to get out and go recruiting. And, you know, we, the, the budget's there, the, the resources are there, but, you know, the resources maybe weren't there 10 years ago. And so we can't slide back. We got to keep feeding that engine, and um, but I, I'm, I don't worry about that at all because I know we've got a great staff, a great support staff that gets that and is is ready and willing and, and wants wants football to be successful. Maybe I'll uh, the basketball search, the men's basketball search, seeking player input, or is that something that you know as this search unfolds? You know, it's uh, the timing of the basketball one was just so unique in that we had um, so much time to kind of figure out, well, what could possibly happen. And we were also the only search at that time, you know, which just really um, took the pressure off of the timing. You know, this time we're, we're, uh, we're in a competition. You know, we've got to uh, put our best foot forward. We've got to sell. Um, and, and I'm confident we can do that. But, you know, the schools that are all out there looking for coaches right now, you, I mean, you could take those schools and probably put them into different buckets of what they're probably looking for, and not all of them are probably going to be looking for the same type of people we're looking for. And that's okay. Did that come into play at all, just the many jobs? Because it's an unusually high year. I think there's like 13, 15 jobs open at this point. Did you even think about that? Or is it you just worry about Iowa State? I worry about Iowa State, but I'd, I'd not be truthful if I didn't say that's not in your mind. Um, you know, I, I think we've had a uh, certainly had a history of not letting the grass grow under our feet in search processes. So I think we're we're equipped institutionally to move forward. Which you know, it goes back to Randy's earlier question. I think some of those schools, um, I would put our processes up against theirs any day of the week. Um, but yeah, there's you know, it's clearly a seller's market than a buyer's market. And uh, that always scares you because what, you know, that could mean for the price of, you know, of, of getting somebody. But, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we cross that bridge. Do you think this is an anomaly or could it be a trend with, you know, with television money? I mean, at the, it's become such a big business. Do you think we could see more, more of this in the future? I think it's, I mean, you can go back over the last seven or eight years and it's cyclical. It just, it works itself through the system. Um, we're just catching it in a, in a year that there's a lot of it. 
Uh, we will. Same one? Yes. Jimmy, you talked about the money, um, you know, the, how being a seller's market, it could cost a little bit more. Um, the four and a half million dollar buyout, seven hundred and fifty grand, roughly a year. Um, how, how much of a, how much of a complication um, does that, you know, kind of insert into your job and, and uh, the coaching search uh, in general? Um, none, because we've one of the things that we've done over the last ten years is um, that I'm very proud of is we've run an athletics program that it's not only invested in itself, but is prepared for a day like this, and uh, you know those decisions that get made along the way. Um, you know, my staff, some of them are here, but they've heard me say it before. When we make decisions, I make decisions based on the fact that I plan to be here. And a lot of my peers around the country make decisions in the moment. And um, it's moments like this that I'm glad we made the decisions with sustainability in mind because we put ourselves in a position that we could deal with that type of a, a buyout issue. But I also look around the country and go, there's people paying a lot more for their buyouts because they made some rush, you know, rash decisions in the moment. And, you know, it just, the price of poker just continues to go up. And um, I think we've positioned ourselves very well to have to deal with that. There's no way around it. I mean, five years from now, the cost of making, you know, getting the wrong person will be even far greater than it is today. And 10 years, it'll be even a multiplier. And if you went back and looked at it five years ago, you know, you'd, you'd go, wow, okay? So, um, You've got to make decisions all the time that aren't just in the moment that are you're thinking about what that impact could be down the road. And we've positioned ourselves really well to be able to deal with that issue. Um, it, I don't like to spend that kind of money because I'm prudent, but it's a cost of doing business.